All right, what's up guys? Welcome to a review for PGA Tour 2K23. Today I'm gonna to be giving you guys my extended thoughts and my honest thoughts, and I'm very much looking forward to diving into this video. I've been waiting a little bit, holding off on this one, so I could fully experience the game and try out all of the modes, um, just so I can make sure that I have the full picture for PGA Tour 2K23. So, PGA Tour 2K23 has added Tiger Woods to the roster as both a player and the cover star slash ambassador. That's right off the bat, automatically gonna put a huge spotlight on PGA Tour 2K23. Can it live up to that? Well, yes and no, let's dive in. So we're gonna start with the gameplay, which has probably some of my favorite changes to the game. The game is a lot more challenging in general, especially short game wise, which is a huge improvement over 2K21, where everything to me just felt very robotic. The chipping in 2K21, I felt like every time I had a chip from just off the green, I was gonna chip it in. Like it was literally like, it wasn't even that difficult to do that, especially on pro. But in 2K23, I'm happy to get it within a couple of feet and that feels like a good shot. Splashes out of the bunker in 2K21 were automatic. In 2K23, they are brutal, especially when you're trying to splash it instead of chip it. And they're really punishing if you hit a bad one. Like you can leave it in the bunker very easily. It just all feels so much more challenging, especially in the short game area, which is something that I really love. I will say the long game potentially might need a little bit of balancing as I think the marginally fast area is a little bit too big and it's not very punishing in general. But that's something that's minor and I think that can be tweaked pretty well. I do overall think the gameplay is a huge step up from 2K21. There is five archetypes in 2K23 and they all offer you different play styles and experiences that really do make a difference. As it stands currently, I've only used the powerhouse and the rhythm and I'm pretty set with the rhythm now. The difference is really noticeable though. Uh, powerhouse gets you a lot closer to the green, but the tempo is so much more difficult to get consistent that I decided to take the hit on the distance and switch to rhythm. And my play has been a lot more consistent since I have done that. You can use fittings such as the shaft or grip to adjust your distance and timing slightly as well. So what I did is I switched to the rhythm, but I also put on like a, a shaft and the head of the club, which increases distance a little bit. So instead of being really short off the tee, um, I'm now only a little bit short off the tee, but I'm hitting much better tempos. But yeah, you can build up your character to your play style without it being completely overpowered, which is great. You can't just make it like a 99 rated character like you can in NBA 2K or something like that. So that is cool. You're always taking a hit when some of your other stats are going up other ones will be going down. Overall, I really do love the gameplay changes, as I said, and I think the game has the potential to be really, really great. But now we go on to probably the biggest problem in the game right now, I will say, and that's the ball sleeves. Uh, this mechanic as it stands right now in the game is completely unacceptable, to be honest. And we're gonna go through a little bit of an example here. So Respawn TV actually helped out with this. He had done some numbers and some mathematics and testing uh, with the different type of balls. So as an example, there's the default ball, the aviator ball and a friction ball. And with a little bit of testing between Respawn and I did some testing myself as well, on very fast greens, the friction ball is 156 green speed, the aviator ball is 167 green speed, and that ball also adds 17 yards carry. And the default ball, which is the free ball you get at the start, is 192 green speed, the max green speed. So not only do the balls make it easier to play, but it completely changes the conditions of the course and the speeds of the greens. Like that is absolutely ridiculous. It just completely ruins the competitive nature of the game online and ruins the designer's vision for how the course plays. So that's something that needs to be adjusted really quickly as you can just use a different ball to make the greens way slower and play the course how you want to play it rather than play it how the designer intended it to be played. So I don't know what they were thinking here and I'm hoping common sense prevails and there's an option added to lock society to the default ball and I do think that that will happen sooner rather than later because I urge 2k to take action sooner rather than later honestly as it is a pretty simple fix. Um, if they lock default balls on societies or you can make the decision to do that then that completely eliminates the problem really. Um, use those default or use those aviator balls and whatever in your own timer in career mode that's fine who cares but when you're playing competitively 
it's not acceptable. So now let's jump in to the career mode and the my player. The my player customization is pretty limited, honestly, and you can't change your weight now anymore, which is a bit of a weird removal because I think that was in 2K21, but meh, more or less the same as 2K21 anyway. But career mode is improved in 2K23. It's nothing crazy, but there's small animations and cutscenes that really do kind of add a nice touch to the game, like picking the ball out of the hole and posing with the trophy when you win, as well as having tiebreakers in the game now. You do do get some cutscenes with your rival as well, like walking down the fairway. Although sometimes those can be a little bit bugged. Even if they're not in your group, you can be walking down the fairway with your rival. You can switch around official courses for the fake tournaments as well and use different 2K official courses for non-official tournaments as you see fit. So say if there's the Falcon open, you can change that to whatever 2K official course you want. And that's a, a really cool feature to stop the career mode from getting really repetitive and to spice it up over the years. Now the PGA Tour highlights I really want to like, but it feels like it's one step forward, two steps back with them. There's a larger variety of shots in the highlights than in 2K21. It's not like they're holding out from the bunker on every single shot, but the camera angles are sometimes very strange where you don't even see the shot go into the hole and the commentary almost never lines up with what is actually happening on screen. At least it wasn't pre-launch. Now I will say since the day one patch, I've played a little bit and it does seem like the highlights are improved in terms of the commentary being matched up. But I will say that the leaderboard or even their scores, when like when I was playing a tournament, Brooke Henderson was 10 under, but when she was taking a shot in highlights, it said she was 23 under or something weird like that. But uh, just minor stuff like that needs to be fixed. Just quality of life improvements. Now I'm not too far into the career yet, but sponsorships do seem like a little bit messy, I'll say. I'm getting offered like five sponsorships for the same thing at the same time, and it's all a little bit overwhelming. The general principle of the sponsorships is you play well, your sponsors are happy, you play badly, and they're not as happy. Pretty simple but effective method, and you do unlock cool stuff through sponsorships, which I can appreciate. Now let's talk a little bit about the online. So it launches with no crossplay and only casual modes outside of societies, but 2K have confirmed that crossplay is coming to 2K23 and an online ranked mode and leaderboards is on the way as well. So I wish that would have made it to launch and I, I really think that they should have at least said it before uh, launch that these are on the way. They didn't make it for launch, but they are on the way. But it's really exciting news nonetheless that those are on the way. I feel like maybe the launch of the game might have just been rushed a little bit and they had to make sure that they got the game out with an ample amount of time to spare ahead of EA Sports PGA Tours launch. Playing with my friends on the early access launch was fine, but there was definitely a couple of little hiccups here or there. Like you couldn't set the difficulty as it was bugged. So you had to leave the difficulty open, but it does seem like that has been fixed as well with the day one patch. The day one patch has fixed quite a few issues that I was having beforehand. So let's talk about the pros and the societies. 2K23 has 16 pros ranging from the GOAT Tiger Woods to live player Bubba Watson to another GOAT in Michael Jordan, with apparently the four playboys scheduled to get playable characters as well. Breaking 100 with Trent on the hardest difficulty is going to be real fun. But yeah, you can now play as pros, which is 100% a welcome addition. They all have their custom swings, at least for the driver. It seems like all of their iron swings are the same, which is kind of a weird one to not go all the way. It seems like their driver swings are unique and their iron swings are, are not much different at all. But you can play as the pros in casual rounds and online rounds with your friends. In societies, you're locked to your own character. The game has 20 courses at launch, but that doesn't tell the whole story really, as of course the game will have an unlimited amount of amazing courses thanks to the course designer and all the amazing course creators out there. But that does bring me to the next topic, which is the course creator, as it seems like that our best designers are not happy with the updates to the course designer. I asked my boy Crazy Canuck about it and he basically said there's pretty much no new updates to the designer which is very disappointing and I've seen a lot of creators announce that they're not making courses in 2k23 and they're taking a little bit of a sabbatical. They've lost their motivation and stuff like that. So disappointing to see but hopefully 2k23 post launch can add some features for designers to help them make the best courses the game has to offer. Societies from what I've played so far seems like it remains unchanged 
changed, you can still only own one, and I'm not sure admin privileges have been improved either. So now we're gonna talk a little bit about the graphics and the bugs in 2K23. The graphics have been improved, but it's probably not what you'd expect a next gen title to be and to look like. Some of the lighting has been improved. Also, the lighting can be a bit weird in certain areas where it seems like there's a shadow on your character when there's nothing around you to really even create a shadow. But uh, the trees and bushes look a lot better than 2K21 for sure. The shrubbery in general looks very improved. Uh, some of the pro's character models look good, some look bad. Players definitely have crazy eyes. I think we probably won't see a significant jump in graphics until we get a new engine. I have noticed I do have some pretty bad screen tearing from time to time on PS5, and that's not something that I really suffered when I was playing the early build on PC. I did struggle to find a match online the day before launch, and even on launch day, I couldn't find anyone to play Divot Derby with. That was a little bit disappointing, but what game does have good servers on day one nowadays, honestly? And there's a couple other minor bugs that I know noticed as well like my pitching wedge is not being a part of my iron set or my wedge set and I just simply can't change the appearance of the club. So my pitching wedge is just standing out like a sore thumb. As my wedges are tailor made and my irons are Wilson but my pitching wedge is just staying the same base HB Studios wedge and there's literally no way to change it. It's super frustrating and annoying. I mean it's not the biggest deal in the grand scheme of things but it does just kind of take me out of the realism and just pisses me off really. Now let's discuss the sounds and music. I will say the new menu music is absolutely amazing. I'm always jamming out to the new menu music. Generally, it's just epic. And uh, I think that they've done a really good job with this because I think 2K21 had okay music. It wasn't bad or anything, but this is just a big step up. And the sounds of the clubs as well is a huge, huge, beautiful step up. Hitting the ball has just an unbelievably satisfying sound to it now, especially with the driver. When you hit it perfect, it's just chef's kiss, man. So overall, I think PGA Tour 2K23 is a significant improvement gameplay wise and a big step forward for the franchise, but the rest of the package hasn't improved or innovated enough from 2K21, in my opinion, and it has some dubious tactics with the golf balls as well that definitely stands out. The thing is that the potential is there because the gameplay, as I said, is really in a good place. I think it could be slightly improved, but it's a big step up over 2K21. And I feel like without the golf balls, if we get rid of that, the competitive scene will be really good. So yeah, I think I'd probably give PGA Tour 2K23 like a 19 out of 30. I think that the core principles of the game are good. And uh, I'm very much looking forward to seeing post-launch content and how much they support this game and if they listen to the community or not. So far, um, it's good news. You know, we're getting already a lot of post-launch content. I'm wondering if that was just because the launch date was rushed or if they're really planning to support this game um, heavily going forward. I hope it's the latter and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This has been my honest review of PGA Tour 2K23. And just to note, I am a 2K Next Maker as well. So if you want to take my opinions with a pinch of salt, that's completely okay and completely understandable um, but I am giving you guys my honest opinions here and uh, I'm sure 2k would urge me to uh, give my honest opinions as well it's been my pleasure to serve you all you can buy some merch link in the description if you want to support the channel make sure you subscribe to the apex sound too as well I just did a, a review for a plague tale requiem and I'm doing play uh, playthroughs and reviews for story games over there on that channel thank you so much for watching really appreciate it see you next time peace out